Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for coming over to the DFS 5-Pack. Don't forget to click the thumbs up video, and let's talk about today's baseball slate. We're going to make today's video more like a members-only video for the public, uh, kind of run through the ins and the outs of it. I know you were darn near some really good finishes last night, so you're probably really pumped to get back into baseball today. I am really close. Close but no cigar last night. Still will take the nice cashes and move on. Um, yeah, man, I love these two-game baseball slates. A lot of edges. Uh you know, people still even more so afraid to play the bottom of the lineups, which is something I love to do. All right. So I'm just going to reiterate, guys, we brought it up on the football video for the rest of the today. We are running a, a tweet contest. The pin tweet to my profile, the link is below. Go retweet it. One out of 10 retweeters will uh, get today's members only video for the showdown for NFL, uh, which we did, you know, multiple types of like lineup construction and things like that. Uh, that being said, we're here to talk about baseball. And with the news. Clayton Kershaw is scratched and not going to be the pitcher tonight. We are really doing with kind of like a, I would just call it like a bottom of the barrel pitching matchups, especially for playoff baseball. In my opinion, Anderson's the best play, but like even that comes with holes, i.e. the Dodgers are phenomenal and Anderson's a rookie. Yes. On that note though, Anderson's definitely my favorite play. He's the best pitcher on the slate now by a good margin, in my opinion. Oh, I mean, if, if you want to talk results, talent, any situation that you look at it, he is the yeah. best pitcher. He has this, been nothing short of phenomenal in the playoffs. He looks like a stud, right? Yes, exactly. He looks like I think of myself when I look in the mirror. Now, in his case, it's actually true, though. Yeah, he looks like a legit stud, a guy that could be a top of the rotation guy for a while for Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, he again, I don't want to overstate like he cut up Cincinnati, Miami, because Cincinnati clearly did not look ready for the moment. And Miami just really isn't that good. But uh, he's been awesome this year. I mean, look at that whip under one, the ERA under one and a half, the record, the strikeouts. I mean, he has not had a start where the, it looked too big for him. His worst start at the Mets, he still struck out eight and only allowed four hits through 4.2. He had a couple walk issues. Uh, and like the Dodgers proved last night, like they're not impossible to, you know, for people to cut them up. Freed was awesome. Yeah, he was really, really good. Uh, Bueller, and I wonder how much the blister is bothering him. He's got two like, of just, them, really. Yeah, like the location just wasn't there. Mm -mm. So, uh, and I do want to give Lance McCullers a shout out because it was my one overlay bet I lost yesterday. He was awesome. He was awesome. Uh, man, yesterday I put money on Freed on overlay, which one, but then I, put, I also bet a couple of hitters and they all lost. So, poopy. That'll happen. I had Brantley. The only hitter I liked all day was Brantley over uh, Tucker. And I, I brought up the point today when I made a video. The number one thing that the guys at Overlay want us to push is the fact that it should be exciting. And Brantley started the game with a single, so he was up on Tucker all day long. Tucker singled in his last at-bat, making it even, thinking I'd have a wash. Brantley gets up again, fortunately, pulls a walk, and takes his two points in the second last at-bat of the game to pull in profit. So that's the kind of fun that they want you to to anticipate. So anyways, we both agree on Anderson though. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I'm with it. Now, as far as SP two goes in this situation, I mean, like, let's just start with Gonsolin. What do you think? Like, what's his leash today? What's his pitch count? This guy has not tossed a pitch five, uh, almost two and a half, almost three weeks. Yeah, man. God. I mean, I like the Braves more than I like Gonsolin now. Yeah, I mean, I would love if we would get any information on what his pitch count is today. Same. But knowing that the Dodgers are, like, the first team to pull their starters anyway, like, I can't picture him going more than four innings, and that's if he's pitching well. I'm with that, man. Now, that being said, if he pitches well and he gets the strikeouts, which, oddly enough, like, he's been all over the board with strikeout rate this year, right? Like, one against Arizona, eight against San Diego, three against Seattle – you know, eight against Colorado. So, like, he's both not and a strikeout pitcher, if that makes sense. Which is weird. Right? Like, you don't get a lot of pitchers who go 10, 2, 3, 3, 8, right? Like, high strikeouts, no strikeouts. High strikeouts, no strikeouts. So, it is all over the place. Atlanta will strike out, but they will also be really good offensively, like, down the latter half of the game yesterday. So, Gonsolin's a bit of a wild card. But I would struggle to play him in the main lineup because I'm sure his leash is short. Yeah, I'm with that 100%. Now, you talked about Arkiti being a guy that people seem to play a little bit too much. Yes. You know, he's another guy. He doesn't have much in the way of strikeout rate. 
It's got a little bit of a shorter leash. Uh, they've only, you know, he came in for the second time against Minnesota. Uh, I don't really like him today, but I can understand why people play him because our SP2 options are terrible. Yeah, give me uh, Tampa bats. Like, honestly, I still, the reason that I kind of like this slate more now is because, and you brought it up before we got on air, and I'm like just thinking about this out loud. So, like, going in, I was going to, like, say, I looked at this last night. I was feeling good. Like, I like Tampa and Houston bats, and I like Kershaw, and I liked uh, Anderson. But I didn't, like, love Kershaw. I liked Anderson more than I liked Kershaw, but it was, like, I wasn't going to use Yarbrough or or Kitty. So, now, I still like Tampa and Houston bats. But now I think the Braves get a lot of love. So, Man, like maybe Gonsolin is in play. I don't really care about the salary, what he's going to pitch. But on that note, what about like Urias coming in behind him? Oh, is that what's happening? I don't know. I'm just talking out loud. How long ago was it that Urias pitched? Uh, he, if so, no, one. He, yeah, he pitched a different day. He definitely pitched one other day since then. Yeah, let's try to figure this out. I was kind of just throwing it out there, you know, like. I should try to, I want to, let's check over this ESPN article real quick to see if it says anything. Just let me know if you can find anything on when he pitched. I know it was a couple days ago. I just didn't, I don't know if it was three or five. Check it out real quick. Don't, don't rookie, Kershaw experience, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off the rails. So game two means Julio Urias will probably go in game three. After that, it's complicated, especially after Dustin May faced eight batters in Monday's five to one loss. So, Urias pitched on the eighth. Okay. So, I mean, they say game three. Game three, but I don't know how much I always trust ESPN for something like that. And now Kershaw's scratched. So, like, that may take, like, he's only with back spasm. Maybe Kershaw goes game three now. Well, it's an article on Clayton Kershaw getting yeah scratched. So, maybe he does go game three. I don't know. I, I think until we get better information, you can take your best guesses on this one, but. I don't have a good answer for you guys right now. Same. Um, I don't either. It's definitely something that's worth looking at, though. Um, man, like now at this point, I never would say this, but I don't hate like even one of the Tampa relievers if you want to use that. I doubt Yarbrough is going to go deep in this game. Yeah, it's tough to use one of those guys, especially when you don't really need the salary cap, though, too. Yeah, but like what pitcher are you? Uh, I'm not, <laughs> you know what I, I, mean? I, I don't really have a good answer for you. I might honestly end up just flipping a coin between Yarder, Yarbrough and Urquidy. I don't like either of them. And for all those reasons, Gonsolin, I'm going to use Gonsolin 10, as, of, as of right now. Yeah. If he gets you 10 points, I don't expect any of these pitchers to go over 15. It's almost always about the bats. Even on days, bats aren't great because a lot of times the pitchers are similar, which is what we saw yesterday. So, man, I'm, I still like Houston, and I still like Tampa. Houston's ready for a breakout game. They have left so many guys on base. Like, they are – they look locked in. I know they haven't scored a lot the first two games of the series. Not sure how much you've seen. But they look – I watched most of yesterday's game. Morton was very fortunate because he also could not locate the strike zone yesterday. And, like, Houston looks good. They cannot get hits with runners in scoring position. Maybe that happens again today. Maybe it doesn't, but – I got no problem with Houston's offense right now. Yeah, especially Carlos Correa, who's maybe been the best hitter in baseball throughout the playoffs. Perhaps. Matt Stanton, Stanton want, would want a word. Probably. Uh, but he ain't in the playoffs anymore. Yeah, exactly. Maybe a Rosarina. Yeah, I got you. Uh, no, Correa's looked really good in the playoffs, so he's a guy I have a lot of oh. interest in. Springer is another guy. His think- bats have mostly looked good. The, interesting, the other thing that's interesting here is now the Dodgers game is first. Oh, yeah, I didn't even realize that. Uh, I just assumed it was second without ever actually looking at the order of it. It's so weird, right? Like, why? Makes no sense. Well, don't you think now Anderson's going to be overwhelming chalk, knowing that these guys right here aren't oh, very good? Yes. Yeah. So Kirk, I'm not going to lie. Stacking the Dodgers a little bit lower on than normal sounds kind of intriguing, too. Definitely. I mean, listen, I like Anderson a lot, but on these slates in particular ownership matters a ton in baseball you know that's how i play like i like anderson a lot but i'm with you man like and all of a sudden like 
I know there aren't two other pitchers that we like, but that's not the point because if the Braves stack gets to, to or the Dodgers stack gets to Anderson and you stack them, you don't really, I mean, the other pitchers are, are basically insignificant because the Dodgers are going to be low owned now. Yeah. And again, it's a two game slate. So low owned is, you know, it, depending on the guy, upper guys, maybe 30%, lower guys, maybe, you know, five to 10%. Exactly. I agree with that. Those numbers, 100%. Yeah, you're going to get Mookie at 35% instead of, you know, 80%. Right. You'll get the bottom of their lineup guys at like 7 to 10%. But yeah, Mookie, Bellinger. Um, the guy actually I like the most, I heard someone else talk about this, is Justin Turner. So Anderson has like a remarkable changeup. Turner's really good against righty changeup. So as a one-off, I like Turner. You, know, you can absolutely play a one-off against your guys again today, and this is like the opposite of yesterday. And it's you know kind of your baseball mantra for you know more than anything is yesterday the Dodgers were really popular and they were terrible, and that might actually cut into their ownership today. And that and the fact that there's only one good SP and it's Anderson, um, the Dodgers are good. Uh, I I like the idea of a Dodgers stack. I like the idea of the Braves yesterday. Of course, I didn't have the stones to play it, and you know that was a team that ended up uh, scoring as many runs as anyone yesterday. I mean, listen, I, I, I said it at the beginning. I think Anderson's a stud. I like him a lot. But, I mean, he's a rookie making his, you know, second, st- third start in the playoffs ever. And it's not like he – I mean, he struggled that one start against the Marlins at home. The Dodgers, I mean, even with Freed yesterday, they made him work. And Freed was excellent. Like, I don't expect Anderson to be good at, as good as Freed was last night. And, again, I don't want to put too much into this, but Anderson's, like, and he was good against the Yankees. He's only really ever gone against one good team. It's interesting. Like, at Boston, Boston's lineup is top-heavy but not very good. Miami, he's gotten several times. We know they're not very good. Since he couldn't hit anybody in that opening round. So, we like Anderson. We think he's really good. But his experience against teams like the Dodgers that will make you work for everything is low. Yeah, and that's a big thing. They will make him work here. And he walks, guys. He doesn't give up a lot of hits, right? Like, other than this game against Miami where he gave up seven hits, there's only one other game where he's given up more than four. But he can walk, guys. He's only given up one home run. So, But I'm more thinking, like, you get into the bullpen in the fifth inning. Yeah, listen. Now, just like your Braves came through late last night, now you see the Dodgers coming through late at lower ownership than normal. I love where your head's at. Now I'm going to have a hard time not doing it. Like, I, it's definitely not the optimal build. I mean, but you're right. Like, whether or not I thought, you know, with Kershaw, like, Anderson was going to be, you know, he was still going to be popular, like 50% owned plus. Now he's going to be, like, 75% owned. It has to be. I mean, I'm going to – I think that might even be low. I think Anderson could be 90% in cash games and 80% in GPPs. Not because people want to pick on the Dodgers, because your other starting pitching options are awful. They're really awful. Like, I won't use Urquidy, like, ever. Um, the one time I used him was against Texas, so that was a good call. Um, and that was all about Texas. He yeah. ain't playing Texas tonight. Nah, Yarbrough, I'm a fan of Yarbrough, but this is not a good spot for him against Houston. I also like that Houston's, like, priced up, so that might take their ownership down a little bit. I already said in my piece about Houston, they're my favorite offense on the board. Yeah. yeah, I can get on board with that. And I guess ideally, I don't have any positive feelings about any one of these three pitchers. I'm not going to sit here on video and tell so, you guys that, that I know who the best SP2 is. I, I, this is a situation where I could put names in a hat and go with just as much confidence on any one of these three casts. If I knew that Gonsolin was like going full, I would definitely have Gonsolin. Yeah. But in the worst spot, I mean, he's in none of them are good spots, but, uh, you know, really not trying to pick on the Braves right now. Oh, but at least they'll strike out. Yes, true. I mean, you can get three on Acuna alone. This is true. Now, you won't go through the lineup enough times to get three, but hypothetically speaking, I got that. And I also like Houston's offense today. Yeah, cool. And still like Yarbrough just as much as the other pitchers, though, so that's the problem right here. So I think it's important to note that whoever you go with today, you can absolutely pull one, two, three bats against your pitcher. I was going to say, man, like usually I would say like two max, but I don't mind three batters against your pitcher, especially with these guys, especially you made the point like only Anderson is going to go like deep into probably. So, you know, then you get it back. Go ahead. 
you know, I'd say also for like Houston though, before I forget to say it, like Yarbrough might only go four innings, but like the lefties right. like Brantley and Tucker, people are going to look at a matched up with a lefty and not play them. They could get two at bats against righties. So yes, definitely agreed. I like those guys just as much, but also like if you do like Yarbrough and you just hate the other guys so much, you could play Yarbrough and Houston and hope that Yarbrough is just fine for his five innings and then Houston blows up late. Also for Tucker, I, if I remember correctly, at one point in the season, at least he had a reverse split against lefties. He, he also does. just missed homers twice yesterday. Like not like missed, like they were robbed home runs, but like they were deep out to the warning track and just missed them. Singled in his last at bat. I know it doesn't show up on DK. And I know that because I was watching that all in the Brentley versus Tucker thing that I had going on overlay. So I like the Tucker call today. I used Tucker everywhere, everywhere yesterday, so that's unfortunate. Yeah, man. I don't I mean I don't know. I'm assuming you were watching part of that game. Like he hit nicely squared up balls to like straightaway center to the warning track. I actually did miss when he hit those. Um, okay. I saw him look foolish in his first at bat, which and, is fine because I had Morton. Yes, and then uh, man, McCullers was so good though. Yeah, McCullers was great, and then turned super great as the shadows rolled in and they couldn't see. Yeah, I mean, he was awesome. I don't know that that mattered because he his off speed stuff yesterday was off the hook. And we talk about with Lance McCullers, right? Like they were giving him a big zone too. Yeah, when he's on though, he's really good. He's just not on consistently. No, you could see in the first inning he got rattled and they gave up that three run bomb. Yeah. All right. Now, as far as like if you're playing like a cash game lineup type of format today, uh, I think you play Anderson. Choose your SP two. I can make arguments for and against all of them. And it's also a day like you're not playing for these guys to go off. So feel free to just to make your best plays at starting pitcher. And this would be a situation for me like I like Travis Darnell. Why? Because he's the best hitter this year out of all these catchers. Mm-hmm. I get that. Uh, at first base, I mean, it's another day. Like, give me some cap space right here if you want to go with G-Man Choi. Otherwise, Freddie Freeman. Give me Gurriel. Or Gurriel. Okay. Gotcha. Even Diaz is in play for me here, but Gurriel looked good yesterday. I'm about it. Second base is going to be weak again, but if you like Houston, you're probably rolling Altuve. I like Altuve and Brandon Lau. There's Lau on here. He's up above Taylor. Yeah. I like both of them. I like this game. I gotcha. Lau's. He's kind of coming. I mean, he's looked foolish most of the season, but we know he's really good, and any day he's going to turn it around. Yeah, one other thing I'll say about Urquidy, and it doesn't apply for Lau, he is he gives up more and big power to righties. All righty then. So at third base, then, you're probably going to do either Bregman or Justin Turner. Yeah, I'll probably actually, like, if I do a three-entry max, I mean, I got to see the, the lineups, but... Man, Tampa could really screw. Like, I don't know what their lineup's going to look like. Actually, kind of do, though. Like, the top of their lineup will be Meadows and Lau. They're not going to do, like, the Tsutsugo. Like, those guys are going to be on the bench, I think, right? Probably. Yeah, so I like Bregman and Turner. And then whoever's Tampa, you know. Is All right, as far as shortstop goes, I got Carlos Correa as, like, a priority for me today specifically. I get that, man. He's definitely would be my favorite, like, you know, one guy for sure. Yeah, I mean, as, as bad as Houston most of their season is gone, and he has not been a big part of it, He's I've watched a, more at-bats of his in the playoffs than probably any other hitter. He just looks locked in and ready for this situation. Mm-hmm. All right, then, as far as outfield goes, uh, again, we mentioned I like Tucker. I like him a lot. I like him a lot today. I like Tucker a lot, too. I'm with it. Those are two that priorities helps. for me for Houston. So you mentioned Meadows up top. Uh, also, George Springer, if you can get up there. Oh, yeah. Or Rosarena. Yeah, I know you're big on that game. So am I guessing this one correctly? If you do a three-entry max today, you're probably going to focus on Houston and Tampa and two of them and the Dodgers and one? I don't know. I might not even do mess. I love where the I love the Dodgers call, but I'm not even sure I'm going to go there because I really like Houston and Tampa. And I just – I'll probably just plant my flag. And, and either just go with the Dodgers or go with Houston and Tampa. So also, despite being up two games to nothing, Tampa Bay hasn't looked good. But also, like, Valdez and McCullers have been on. The fact that they got out yeah. of the series right now up two games to nothing when they looked like the inferior team twice is kind of amazing. 
True. That makes me think they're definitely winning this series, personally. It's hard not to win the series when you win the two games where you look like the worst team. Right. I'm with, yes. So, so I'm, the Dodgers is so interesting here. Like I am torn on it because I, I love all your points. Um, I, I'm, I'm torn on it. Yeah. And a big part of the Dodgers is they're good, right? Like the, we know this offense with Betts and Bellinger and Turner and Muncie and Will Smith, like they're really good. Yes. And their ownership is going to be much lower now than it probably should be, which matters a lot, even though like, that might not be like uh, it's so hard because some like oh uh, it's it's diff- it's a difficult decision. Well, like when you sent me that lineup last night, and you know you said you were looming for first place in that GPP, and I looked at it like it's not a good lineup by the standards of the way the way people look at DFS a lot of times. But it's so different on a two game playoff slate than it is during the regular season when you need all your hitters to go off. Why? Because there's only a couple hitters who did anything good yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Almost being different is almost more important right now than being like so like quote unquote optimal you know know, the point that we made like austin riley yesterday with the late home run uh at nine percent or eight percent versus justin turner you know at 50 some percent yes justin turner is a better play on paper even you who played austin riley is not silly enough to come on video and tell people that justin turner isn't the better play on paper but is he seven or eight or nine times the better play no, and I mean, that's the other reason why I like stacking is because I'll use guys that people, like, are afraid to use. And in baseball, like, it's just so random. I mean, it's just so random. No yeah. no better way to put it. You got to assume a guy I like again today is Marco. Big game yesterday. Great catch. Big home run. Can't believe DK doesn't have their points updated, but... Apparently, none of the places are doing a good job with updating points lately, except for Overlay. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I played, uh, you know, with – everyone was talking about FanDuel, and they had, like, massive Overlay in all their contests. So I, like, had a little bit of money in there and played a, con- a baseball contest, and it's still not updated. I mean, I got to say this. Like, a couple of years ago, like, DK and FanDuel seemed to be, like, neck and neck. Like, there's a clear-cut better platform now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even when we started, it was like, you know, which one is more, you know, visually uh, appealing to whoever that made a big difference. Now it's like DraftKings is just the better product. No doubt about it. Um, It's like Coke, just better than Pepsi. Yeah, I wasn't sure which Coke you were talking about, but I actually like Pepsi more than Coke, but that shouldn't be surprising to you. Yeah, because you just like to do what the other people don't do. Uh, I am just a fan of Pepsi, man. Well, it tastes like Zeus's butthole by comparison, but still, you know, you do you, boo. And you probably like Qdoba better than Chipotle. Definitely not. Definitely okay, not. Good. Well, that's at least a little bit normal. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. It's always, uh, I just prefer Pepsi, but uh, man, have we gotten off track here? Yes, we have. Okay. <laughs> so I like Darno because he's actually a good hitter. And yeah, we talked about it yesterday. Occasionally, Mike Zanita will run into one. And did he ever run into one yesterday? He looked foolish on every pitch of the game except for the 800-foot home run that he hit. Yep. Man, that ball was crushed, though. Flat out smoked that thing. That was all over it. Here, you like Gurriel. I kind of like Choi. Uh, If you're loading up on this game, you're going to kind of have to mix and match where you're going. I don't have Freeman as a priority today, but, of course, we both wildly understand how good Freddie Freeman is. So if you want to get up there, completely get it. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's awesome. (laughs) That's all it is. You know, uh, Altuve, if you like narratives, he's got a lot to make up for because they lost yesterday because of him. Mm-hmm. This is true. Man, what a costly mistake. Man, that, that sums up his year, like, in a nutshell. Absolutely. Uh, Turner or Bregman right here. Correa, Tucker. Uh, and again, the Dodgers to be more of the alternative build, but, like, you brought up Manuel Margot right here. Fine, get him in there. Now you can grab, if you want to do bets, fine, or Acuna, fine, or else you just go grab George Springer, and you got this game rolling. For sure. Um, and take Yarber out and put in whoever you want, because quite frankly, I don't care for any of these three guys, but you got to pick somebody. And I do think maybe if you're not using Gonson, you want a piece or two of the Braves. Absolutely. And again, we completely understand using the Braves. You don't want to go there because you think they're going to be chalk. I get that. Uh, and we didn't include a lot of them in this build, but I have no problems using the Braves. They're also really good. And Gonsolin's also a rookie. He's been pretty phenomenal this year, but I don't even know how much you get of him. One thing I'll say, though, man, 
Where is this game? Do you know? Uh, they're playing in Texas. So this game is a 4 p.m. Eastern game, or a 4 p.m. local time game, excuse me. Uh, it's really good pitching environment, I would assume. Probably. That would make sense. So uh, That's about what we got for today, fellas. That's all I got. Have a good one, and we'll see you all later. Thanks, guys.